as competition for land and water intensified between livestock farmers and those growing crops. Long decade of violence between farmers and herders worsened across many parts of Nigeria's northwestern state, leaving many thinking of ways to stem the violence sweeping through the region. With over 3 million out of the Nigeria's 40 million cattle population, Sokoto State, recently hit by banditry and farmer herders related conflicts, may have just found a solution to the problem of herd management across the country. We are one of the few states with minimal farmer herders clash. We usually have an interaction between our farmers and herders. And each program we want to conduct will invite both parties. For instance, we have a, a place, a village in Dogondaji, where you'll find farmers, herders coexisting in the same place. Both of them are farmers, both of them are herders. And the demarcation of these grazing reserves have helped us in minimizing such crisis. Because we demarcate a place, and before we do that, we will have a meeting between the farmers and the herders, and that this is the limit of each and every one of you. And with that, you don't have a problem. You see, the major challenge we are having is not providing the Fulani to have access to feed and water. In this grazing lands, we plant pastures and we provide water as art dams, which they will use in doing their business. Now, a farmer has no business in going to any grazing land to graze, to, to, to farm. We have taken adequate measures by setting up committees at various levels, both local and state levels, to monitor the encouragement of these facilities. And again, we also limit the herders from crossing over to farms, especially during the farming season. So this has actually minimized this. Even when there is absolute problem of feed, especially during dry season, the state government has taken initiative of producing its own feed and be given to these farmers. We want to go into a very large scale now so that we will continue to minimize the farmers' harvest clash. In 2011, Governor Amin Waziri Tambwal of Sokoto State launched the state cattle breeding program with the importation and distribution of over 170 exotic cattle to upgrade local breed, improve herd management, as well as to minimize conflict between herders and those growing crops. Branga's breed that we have produce is weighs about 500 to 1,000 kg in less than one and a half years of age. Currently, the breeds we have are in that category. We have the combination of Sokoto Gudali and Branga's, as well as Sokoto Gudali and Jersey, Sokoto Gudali and Jersey and Horsian. This has improved the capacity in terms of size of these animals. And that means more meat for our butchers and more money for our livestock producers. We also realize that pasture development or pasture or feed consumes about 75% of the cost of production. And what we do is to ensure that we produce feed first for our cluster farmers and then for other pastoralists. We have cleared already 5,000 hectares at Rapa with all the pivot irrigation system. But because of insurgency, we had to suspend there and then hurriedly go to Dogondaji and initiate the pasture development process. We have already done the rainy seeding and we are currently doing the uh, dry seeding farming where we have planted sorghum, lab lab, uh, napia, uh, Brecaria, Sogum, a lot of things. We have the feed mill that we established where we'll be processing and packaged and sold to our farmers at subsidized rate. This will encourage them to go more into this production. That is livestock production. Now, the farmers have already key into this. Many people are now looking for us to do the artificial insulation and the transfer for them. And I'm telling you, in no distant future, you will now have more improved breeds in terms of dairy production and meat production.
The scheme is also part of the state government deliberate but well-conceived plan to settle pastoralists, which is currently bringing calm and improving heart management in Sokoto State. Under the program, there are 13 clusters of dairy farms mixed with both local and foreign breeds, spacious housing, constant supply of feed and supplements that encourages the farmers to grow further for their hearts and veterinary skills, including setting up cooperative and send their produce to government or private milk processing facilities. This is CD Omar Palm, one of the 13 beneficiary clusters that benefited from the animals given to them by the Sokoto State Government uh, in order to, en to enhance the productivity of our local breed. Uh, each and every cluster, each palm was given nine number of cattle, six female dairy cow, two male dairy bulls and one beef bull. Also milking equipment were given to each and every palm. So also is the holding facilities, generator and uh, water tanks uh, given to the palms. Since its establishment, the state government has made significant and appreciable investments toward achieving the set objectives. The State Ministry of Animal House has done some modest developmental progress in terms of uh, performance in achieving our mandate. The first is that uh, we looked at the livestock and fisheries subsectors of agriculture holistically. And what we do is also to look at the departments we have and itemize our programs. We have the veterinary services department, we have the livestock services department, we have range management department, we have fisheries department. These are the key four technical departments apart uh, from the normal uh, administration and uh, also monitoring departments. The first major steps includes demarcation of 19 grazing reserves for the pastoralist redesigning and equipping Sokoto Dairy Processing Plant where 5,000 liters of calipet yogurt is processed. Our tank has a capacity of 2,000 liters, 2,500 liters at a time. In a day we can operate twice in a day. So that means we can operate up to 5,000 liters of fresh milk in a day. But 2,500 is our capacity of our tank. Yes. So we normally Posturize. When we posturize, we decream. When we decream, we come here and uh, is, uh, make it in the sachet. If we want, we can use the can one. We have the machine there that we can operate and uh, put all our fresh milk, uh, all, all our yogurt in a can. Uh, up there, we have the, the, the inoculation tanks where we inoculate. You know, when we receive the 5,000, 2,500 liters, we have to posturize after pasteurization we homogenize, after homogenize, they will give it uh, eight hours to inoculate. After that eight hours, uh, our yogurt is ready for packaging. To further ensure effective implementation of the scheme, the Sokoto Cattle Breeding Office was established and fully equipped with 24-hour service veterinary clinic, mobile veterinary laboratory, state-of-the-art digital conference hall, establishment of 50 liters daily capacity liquid nitrogen plant, establishment of well-equipped artificial insemination and embryo transfer facility, among others. In addition to the semen storage, mm. uh, sample storage, you, it can also be used in ice cream production. Okay. So these are our liquid nitrogen dealers or liquid nitrogen tanks. For example, you want to conduct an artificial insemination on the kill. There is no way you can carry this one and move it. So what, what you need to do is to is to drain your liquid, produce liquid nitrogen into one of these ones. Then you take it to the field. Mm. You have them. You have you look at how it looks like. Oh, All these are semen inside. They are life cells. Have, yes. Liquid nitrogen may not, or may not necessarily be used by, for, for only preservation. Other laboratories come here to, to, to buy it. So 
Those who are conducting researches in the universities, in the hospitals, they also require the use of this uh, liquid nitrogen. So now, instead of us going to Potaco, Joe's, or Zaria to buy, we can be able to produce our own liquid nitrogen here for our own use and for sale to other sister organizations. <music> The veterinary clinic is a clinic that provides a lot of services to the general public. One of the services is clinical services, where we treat a number of animals of different species. Uh, the species include the ovine species, which we call sheep, the caprine species, which we call goat, the avian species, which we call uh, uh, poultry or chickens, and then the small animals, uh, the small animal comprising the dog, cat, and other uh, species of animals. As at last year, we had like uh, 17,386 cases, among which the surgical cases are up to 3,077 while the non-surgical cases are 14,386. So for this year, the first quarter, we had like, uh, 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 to date, we are having 7,260 cases, among which uh, 1,261 were surgical cases, and then the remaining ones are non-surgical cases. At least every day we do conduct two to three surgeries. As of last year, we recorded, I think, over 800 to 900 surgical cases. 800 to 900 surgical cases in both small and large animals. The number of animal surgical procedures that came out with complications are few because we make sure that we carry out the necessary things before going in. Probably we carry out the surgical evaluation we check if the animal is fit for the surgery or not, and that's what we call pre-surgical prophylaxis, antibiotic prophylaxis, that we normally administer to animals before surgery. All this will, will help us in preventing post-surgical complications. This is the machine that we normally uh, test whether the animal has enough blood or not, because before we go further to carry out some major theaters, mm. uh, which includes CS, immunotony, and neurology, and whatever, and we have to actually test and see whether if the animal can take the surgery. A part of what the government did was to ensure that we have veterinary clinics across the 24 local government areas, as well as uh, establishing a procedure of performance of our veterinary doctors. Of course, we give automatic employment to our veterinary doctors when they, they graduate, as well as giving salary to our students that are in 400, 500, and 600 levels, so as to encourage them to stay and perform well without getting any interference, especially financial difficulties. This has increased the number of enrollment of our students to read veterinary medicine, particularly the ladies. Currently, we have more than 160 veterinary doctors in our kitty, all under the employment of the state government. You can hardly find any state that has this quantity of, of veterinary doctors working. Two, we brought in some equipment, modern ones, like X-ray machines, mobile and static one, ultrasound machines, and a lot of them that we station in some of our clinics. Currently, Sokta State is the only state that operates a 24-hour veterinary services in the country. If you go to our Lee Jado clinic now, you see our veteran doctors at any hour of the time. This is in addition to the purchase of vehicles for ambulatory services, so that you can be able to reach anywhere in Sokta State without having to bring in your animal from wherever you are. This is, for instance, when you need some specialist interventions, apart from our general veterinary doctors that are in general practice. 
maybe you want to conduct surgery, we have vehicles that we go in to do that surgery with our doctors. We have a bit, we have some call duty vehicles that bring in our doctors at any time of the night to come and attend to our district, uh, our animals. Governor Amin Waziri Tambo through the State Ministry for Animal Health and Fisheries Development is currently improving the quality and quantity of milk produced by beneficiaries from 3 litres to between 10 to 30 litres per cow daily. while the beef component of the program has improved the weight of the animals from between 150 kg and 350 kg to 500 kg and 1000 kg. You realize that initially our farmers will just produce about two, three to four liters maximum of milk per cow, per milking. Now, currently, I'm speaking to you. You realize that some of these animals are producing between 10 to 30 liters per cow per milking per day. This has increased not only the economic income of these people, but also improved the employment opportunities because they have to employ more people to handle these animals and also in the production of the milk they are doing. Most of them are now producing yogurt. In order not to waste the yogurt if they couldn't sell it, we also resuscitated completely with new equipments our dairy plant, whereby we collect milk from these people that are unable to sell it off, or from our pastoralist who he thought will just be throwing away the milk they own the cruise and we process it and then we sell to the members of the general public. Currently we have the capacity of processing five thousand liters of milk daily at our milking plant. And this has generated a lot of opportunity and also economic development. We have the, the, the artificial insemination and embryo transfer center. This was built and well equipped with a modern conference room that we conduct our international conferences or international engagements, national, both national and international engagements, using the modern technology. Then we have the AI laboratory, the artificial insemination embryo transfer laboratory. And as I'm telling you, if you go and look at it, it's one of the most well equipped in the country. I don't think there is any laboratory, be it either private, university or state, that has the facilities that we have in that place. Then apart from that, we also engage in the production of liquid nitrogen, where we have a plant for that. Currently we produce between 40 to 45 liters of liquid nitrogen daily and this is used in the maintenance and storage of our semen and embryo and it can also be used in doing some scientific uh, research like in the storage of uh, bacteria and viruses. So apart from using it for the storage of semen and uh, embryo, we can also commercialize it for people that are interested in it. We are the only state that has such facilities. To fully expand the program, community artificial insemination program across the state was intensified to enhance productivity of indigenous livestock. Free annual vaccination program was reintroduced to address the problem of transboundary animal diseases and pasture of different varieties at Dogon Daji was developed to ensure all year round availability of livestock feeds for high productivity. The project COP it is intended to at least cover most of the, our local farmers who are having the, this local breeze so that when they are crossbreed with the exotic ones brought from South Africa, they will at least improve their own milk and for uh, meat production. So at least economically they will be, they will be, they will be viable and the productivity will also increase by the state in terms of GDP. So I think that uh, 
aspect will be better when properly harnessed with the little we have and this incoming um, policies we are, we are bringing now. We are, big, we are now in the second phase now. We have already been for the first phase and we have seen the outcome, the result achieved so far we are successfully. We have a lot of the now the genotype of the protein of the animals given birth to the smaller ones and crossbreed. So with time, the third one maybe we will have a complete exotic animal after the size phase of this one. On the aspect of fisheries development project, the administration of Governor Amin Waziri Tambul is restocking fishing water bodies with high premium fish, distribution of boats, fishing equipment, and grants to the fishermen and women around major fishing areas in the states. The, the fish actually will have two sub-components. We have artisanal and we have the culture fisheries. When I say artisanal, it means just fishing on the river. One of the culture, it means fish farming. So there are, there are some understanding or some cooperation between our ministry and this category of farmers and the, and the fishermen. In every aspect, our, our ministry is doing its best to see that at least this category of farmers and uh, fishermen were equally being be enjoyed the business of the government. So we had a program of empowerment last three years. We had uh, an empowerment program on fish farmers. We do give them pengalings, plastic tanks, peas, and, uh, and peas, peas and peas, all free. So that won't encourage them to partake in this business so that it will increase the, it will meet up the demand ever existing demand of the people in the state. So with the, with the additional and with the capture, when it's come much together, it at least we'll be able to meet up the existing demand of our citizens. Last time we had a problem with uh, sometimes the depletion of uh, some of the products, yes. like fish. So state government introduced some of the restocking program mm. so that the with that water you have seen, water bodies, mm -hmm. at times they, they, have, they have some challenges. So we did a list tracking program where over one million pingalings were stocked at various locations, various water bodies. Mm -hmm. yes. And uh, according to our edicts, when this is done, fishermen will be restricted from interim water for at least a period of six months. Mm -hmm. So you may ask me, then what are, going to, what are they going to do? Then government provide alternative. When you are asked to develop from fishing for a certain period, government now introduce some supportive package to keep you give in terms of grants, in terms of grinding machine, so that they will now the activity will be moved or shifted to these economic activities before this time reaches. So you are you have to abandon this one and you are given an alternative. So you will not be left as well not doing nothing. Yes. yes, that's the essence of providing this incentive to fishermen who are asked to withdraw from this farming and uh, fish farming season till these epingalings grow as like at least six months under normal circumstances it takes this one to grow table size. Clearly, Governor Amin Waziru Tambo's wonderful vision, styling qualities and excellent contributions to this sector are so outstanding that they cannot come to pass without recognition. These projects have actually repositioned our state in terms of economic development. Because from our focus, our focus has shown that we should be able to generate over 500 billion naira annually from these programs. This breeding system, cattle breeding. So with a state that has a budget of less than 200 billion, earning over 500 billion, you can see that we don't have to wait for any handout from the federal government, as well as we'll do some capital projects with what we have generated.
This is actually a well-conceived program from His Excellency that he wants to leave a legacy that even if these programs have not been achieved in its entirety, at least the incoming government will be able to benefit from what I've just said, the 500 billion naira. The issue is that he has certain, set up the face of doing this. If we have governors that have this focus, if we have people that have this focus of not trying to generate money and spend them, but trying to generate income for the state, even if they are not going to use it. While the Sokoto State Ministry of Animal Health and Fisheries Development continues to collaborate with foreign and domestic development partners, the state government is currently looking to establish veterinary specialist hospital, which is expected to be the first in the entire northern Nigeria. We are able to consolidate what we are doing by trying to bring in investors who are coming to show interest based on what they have seen. And this is evident by the accolades and recognition we have. Just last year, the award which was done this year was given to our minister, the most performing, outstanding ministry in the country for both agriculture and animal health. Again, we also had an award from South Africa, International Society for Brangas, which is a breed that is meant for meat, uh, meat production. The president of the International Society, which is based in, who said was based in South Africa, gave an award to me on behalf of the state government as the most performing country and state in terms of Brangas performance. This is done actually annually. I never knew about it till when we went to South Africa because we're in the process of bringing in about 250 to 300 more exotic breeds of animals, which I've already selected and will be given to the farmers. Nigeria's cattle population is currently estimated at 40 million, 3 million here in Sokoto State. But while conflict continues between farmers and herders across many parts of Northwestern region, Sokoto State government says its plan to settle pastoralists is bringing calm and raising outputs across the states.